when you start to deal with women and men, you're dealing with XX for a woman and XY for a man. But before that, you have XYX and YXY, which deals with the hermaphrodite and the hemophrodites, right? And the reason the, the woman is first, because when you look at a Y, it's a defective X. So one of the stems of the X, the one on the right-hand side, has been broken off. So this is why even scientists will tell you that the X has more genetic material. And if you look at it, even on a telescope, it's bigger than the Y. So a man will have everything a woman has, like what we call mammary glands, and he doesn't feed a child or a baby, he doesn't produce breasts. So the way women produce, or certain reptiles, they're able to produce through something called a sexual reproduction, like single cells breaking into other cells. And when you look at the genetics, the genitals of a female, she has um, a clitoris, right? I hope, I don't know if this is censored, but like she has, well, this is also biology in it. So um, the clitoris is actually a, a small penis because when the child is like between, like up to six weeks, the gender is not known, it's neutral gender. This is what, when I was saying about the hermaphrodite and the hemophrodite, these are beings that can have both genitals, yeah? But what happens is, again, we have a, a scroll that goes into that. When you see the child or the fetus at six weeks, yeah, the penis in the woman will go down and go in and become a clitoris. The male, it will go out and become a penis. Yeah, so women were here first and they, they were even able to reproduce by themselves because they secrete fluids, yeah, called uh, um, the urethral. Yeah, yeah um, you, can, you can check out and research pathogenesis, yeah, which deals with women because originally women used to lay eggs and they still lay eggs now. Mm. It's just that like chickens lay eggs and the, ch the eggs come out and then they wait and sit on them until they hatch for the baby to come out. Women now have it within them until when the egg hatches, they call it their water breaking. Yeah, so they were actually able to impregnate themselves from the fluids that were secreting from the penis back into themselves. And back in those days, they used to always have twins. This is why you have two mammary glands. And people will say, how is it possible? There's actually some women still on the planet today that have been able to give birth to themselves. And this is where the whole like Virgin Mary and that concept comes from, because they were saying, how did you get pregnant without a man? But yeah, do, do some research on the different chromosomes. As I said, the X, Y, X, the Y, X, Y, and then you have the X, X, and you have the X, Y, which is, male or female, and then you have the chromosomes, which you'll have 23 chromosomes from the man, 23 chromosomes from the female, and then you get the 46 chromosomes that make you up. DNA is actually the science of today, like our ancestors, that's their technology, and they can break down and prove everything now by way of genetics. I don't know if you wanna- Yeah, add the, like, like the Bible story, like, God putting man in in Adam into a deep sleep and then taking a rib out and then creating woman, like come on, how, how's man gonna accept that? How's how's there no fallopian tube or womb here in the, in man's rib? So how's God creating a woman out of man's rib? Like explain that, but because mm. we're supposed to have this faith and belief, believe God can do all these things, man just accepting that rubbish there. You know look what I mean? Look at this as well. When you look at the word woman, <laughs> you always see man inside <laughs> yeah. of woman. You look at the word lady you see lad inside of lady. You look at the word female, you see male inside of female. So it's she? actually, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's actually quite obvious. Yeah. Um, I don't know the people that want to fight this. Yes, we understand about the sperm going into the woman now to create, because nowadays a lot of women don't remember how they used to do it or are able to, to still do it. So now they need a man. And remember that we say the domain of the planet is woman. That's why everyone says she, and they refer to everything as she performs good for me, mother nature. But when you come out of the planet now, you're dealing with God, that's a he, because he's not from here, you see. So this is where all the, the misconception comes in. And 
I touched on this last video where I said about the dolphins, right? The extraterrestrials or our ancestors, they actually put um, a capsule inside the dolphins and transported the dolphins here. And when the dolphins went in the water, that melted and then germinated the waters. I'm talking about early life forms, yeah? This is why people will tell you how we're genetically close to the dolphin. And if you start even looking at the chromosomes and things like that, and then life evolved from the waters onto land, which again, we kind of touched on the last time where I explained that when you go into ancient cultures and they tell you about the creation stories, the Bible stories, if you go to like, the Dogons, or you go to the Egyptians, or the Zoastics, the, Mer the Sumerians, they have a different account of the creation stories. And, and that's where you'll find in ancient Egypt, they tell you that a tomb, yeah, there's, there's a picture on the wall where they show, um, they show him, or a moon with the phallus, mm. and they show you, and they call it a tomb. This is where the word atom comes from. Because the creation story as relayed by the ancient Egyptians tells you about the seed or the, um, the phallus of the seed or the germination coming from atom. It's no coincidence that atom, atom, and then Adam. They tell you now, they say Adam was the first man, but that's coming from that story of how the atom, because when we go to the atoms, I think I touched on this the last time, where you have, on this side, you have hydrogen, helium, going this side and then going that side, you have E1, E2, E3 going that side, which is dealing with the etheric side, which deals with quarks, biaps, zeles, etc. So um, what people are calling how life started from a religious point of view, it's a very kind of like watered down version of what actually really took place, you know? So this is why in ancient Egypt, we had secrets that were only secreted to those people who were taught and initiated. And all the Europeans that became known as the fathers of science, you know, Socrates, Plato, aristocrat, all of these guys, they were initiated in ancient Egypt. And when you start looking at where civilization came from, you're gonna go back to the Nile Valley to, to Egypt. And to this day, people are marveling and wondering about the Egyptians, how did they build the pyramids? you know, and the things that they did, how were they able to do brain operations and brain surgery and, you know, doing things that, till this day, people are still trying to, to figure out. Just a, a quick um, correction as well. When when they talk about um, Egypt being the greatest civilization, we are the civilizers. We are the ones that civilize the rest of the planet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's important because when they say you're civilized, they're trying to say you were in a savage state yeah, and somebody came state. and civilized mm, you. Mm. But no, nah, it's, it's the other way around. 